Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry for the disturbance. Now YouTube. Is it audible? Yes, sir. Audible. Yes, sir. Audible. All right, sir. Thank you. Now we have to share again. Now this program is also coming in YouTube. Live. So those who are not joined, please uh, uh, just guide them. It is available in the YouTube and the uh, YouTube link. On the... Yeah. It's on YouTube link you can. I will share with Jayashree. Right? Uh, you can share with Jayashree. Dr. Jayashree. She is also not here, sir. We okay. Share it. Uh, okay. Then you can share. Uh. Sir, you can please carry on. This one. It's okay. Not this one. Stop. Stop. So is it visible now? If you it a little? Yes, sir. Visible. Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Ah, okay. So here, uh, the deliverables and deliverables for state nodal officer, here uh, defining data requirement to assess nutritional illness, vulnerabilities resulting from or related to climate change events and develop multi-sectoral coordination. These are the committees. At each uh, district, you have to develop a multi-sectoral coordination committee involving all the stakeholders, related stakeholders. And uh, then second is uh, designing action plan to mitigate, uh, to reduce nutrition-related disorders or uh, deficiencies due to climate change effects. And fourth one is designing action plan during climate change and emergencies. So if emergency occur, if heat wave occur, if floods occur, if other things occur, so how to face. So those uh, uh, blueprint, the action blueprint, we have to make it ready because when these emergencies occur, we don't know. So these are the preparedness action to be taken from each state and each district also. So the list of stakeholder with defined roles and responsibilities, government and non-government, and these are the, we have identified. Even something if you uh, want to add also, you can add here, and uh, that is my majorly is the Ministry of Health and Ministry of HRD, including the Ministry of uh, Women and Child Development, because all the nutrition part, this Women and Child Development and the Ministry of Health, these two uh, ministries uh, take care. And of course, Ministry of Agriculture also very important because all uh, agriculture are production related and storage related, uh, food uh, supply, food availability, all these things also under Ministry of Agriculture will be taking place. And food distribution uh, centers, this is also very important, food distribution centers, uh, especially even uh, 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 PDS centers and uh, even Ministry, Ministry of uh, Food Supplies and Food Production. So this, these uh, things also we have to involve and food supplies, even uh, yeah, if food supplies comes under all uh, um, uh, fair price shops uh, and uh, PDS and then uh, Food Corporation of India, all these things also we have to... Uh, and food testing laboratories. Hello? Is it, is it audible? Is it audible? Yes, audible. Yes. Yeah. Yes, please, please, uh, please uh, mute yourself. Somebody is talking.
మళ్ళీ ఏమైందా నువ్వు ఏం చేస్తున్నావు దిస్ ఈస్ దిస్ ఇస్ దిస్ వాట్ విఆర్ హియర్ ఓకే సో ద ఫుడ్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూషన్ సెంటర్స్ ఆల్సో వీ హ్యావ్ టు కొలాబరేట్ అండ్ ఫుడ్ సప్లైస్ అండ్ ఫుడ్ టెస్టింగ్ ల్యాబరేటరీస్ దిస్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ బికాస్ Uh, continuous food testing laboratories also should work what are the changes in the composition of uh, uh, nutrient composition in these food uh, laboratories and water and sanitation is also very important and power of electricity and meteorological department also we have to network because uh, day to day what are the changes what are the prediction in the temperature what are the prediction of rainfall and all those things and we have also involved local ngos especially the role of ngos is very much appreciated and uh, all aspects whether it may be health or whether it may be nutrition or whether it may be water supply ngos help also we have to take and role of health sector state nodal officer and task force uh, we have to develop and uh, here what the role the the, the uh, health sector develop and adopt a health micro plan for reducing nutritional deficiency disorders so for their states they have to develop a micro plan is a blueprint and map vulnerability based on seasonal nutritional screening especially vitamin a deficiency anemia in children pregnant and lactating women and high risk communities we have to focus medical officer or dm and ho should uh, work on this okay they have to more focus on anemia and vitamin a in the vulnerable areas vulnerable districts or vulnerable uh, uh, taluks and villages they have to see and capacity building and increasing awareness for individual communities so those who are uh, uh, regularly or periodically affected communities we have to identify and we have to create awareness and how to cope up mechanisms so should be adopted and healthcare workers also we have to involve and we have to orient the healthcare workers how to uh, solve these problems then uh, strengthen and develop active and passive surveillance for nutritional deficiency this is uh, ultimately more important for feedback every month or every quarterly we should get the report on that particular area about uh, surveillance and activities and any nutritional deficiencies is increasing so those things we have to follow and strengthening surveillance and control programs for disease like malaria cystozoomiasis and and parasitic infections and scale up integrated food security nutrition and health programs in vulnerable zones for at risk populations and strengthen maternal and child health services and promote implementation of imnca program here the strengthen maternal and child and these are the vulnerable groups because uh, pregnant women lactating women uh, young children adolescent girls and adolescent population is uh, very sensitive to uh, this uh, uh, undernutrition because they are, the demand is more the physiological demand is more in these groups so that's why the, these groups we have to first screen these groups and uh, serve, uh, and uh, and include in the surveillance activity these groups and expand and promote fortified food consumption in the vulnerable population expand and promote food fortification consumption in the vulnerable population suppose in drought affected area is there lot of uh, uh, reduction of uh, fruits and vegetable growth is there then consumption also come down so in that case in that population groups there there will be a a uh, lot of micronutrient deficiencies may occur so because of micronutrient deficiencies some other diseases also occur so then we have to see we have to promote or motivate people to consume fortified uh, foods because fortification is a uh, fortified foods we will get all minerals and vitamins in the fortified foods so that way we can protect the population <clears throat> then develop or translate iec communication plan this we have to uh, a, a, a local local languages all iec material we have to translate into local language and we have to disseminate this messages we have disseminate this guidelines and uh, directives 
and the capacity building and increasing awareness of the population through regular training workshops and health and nutrition education. This is also because at each district level or each state level, these uh, things also we have to take up and we have to percolate into even talukas and even village level also. We have to conduct this awareness camps. We have to involve all the stakeholders and SHG groups and Anganwadi workers, ANMs and uh, ASHA workers in this group. And support and strengthen preventive programs on health and nutrition, especially fortification, supplementation and projects within public health divisions, which emphasis on community involvement projects. So support and strengthen preventive programs on health and, health and nutrition. So these uh, programs are already there, several programs are there. We have to improve its coverage. And even most of the people even may not know some of the programs. We have to create awareness about the programs. We have to make them as a beneficiary under these programs. So coordination with other sectors for reducing the nutrition related diseases. So assess availability of medical and health services, how the medical and health services is there in that particular district or particular state and existing specific vector control measures and other disease control measures such as malaria eradication programs. So the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Ministry of Women Development, uh, so they, they are uh, regular, they are responsible for regular screening of school children for early detection of nutritional diseases. Here under uh, Human Resource Development, HRD Ministry, already several programs are there, school health program is there. Then. Uh, then RBSK program also there. The, the under the RBSK program, the school, school, school children usually regularly they screen, but this uh, activity should be intensified in those affected areas. And including dietary guide in the school curriculum with reference to Indian food habits also we have to include in the school curriculum and sensitize students and teachers on nutritional deficiency and warm infestation and other gastrointestinal infections leading to malnutrition. So Ministry of Human Resource and Development uh, and Ministry of Women, Women and Child Development, uh, these activities they can take care. They, they are already doing, but more focus may be given in the affected areas. And the Ministry of Agriculture, of course, the Ministry of Agriculture should promote agricultural practices, addressing specific nutrition demand of general population, and availability of the same. Suppose if some particular food is a particular type of food is shortage in that particular area, the Ministry of Agriculture, the local agricultural officials should see that those kind of food should be available in that particular population. So then only the balanced diet and balanced nutrition will be improved. Then identify the food supply chain channels impacting food availability and accessibility in the regions. So the agriculture departments, food and civil supplies, food and distribution, and the food supplementation program, ICDS, MDM, PDS, and farmers, local wholesale, retail markets, and dairy farms, and electricity department, metrological department. All these departments should work in a coordination manner. So otherwise, the things will not happen. So in a coordination, in a networking manner, they all the departments should work uh, on, on farm and storage and transportation and distribution. These are all the three things uh, they should focus, type of crops produced and type of crops yield and uh, losses under climate uh, variability and extreme weather conditions. They should uh, identify these problems. Then they have to improve the storage conditions and assess the storage losses in godowns, warehouses, cold storage of food, grains and foods and coordinate with the local electricity department for identifying the power failures and fluctuations in the storage facility. Because to maintain the godowns, store, store uh, uh, cold storage uh, godowns, electricity is very important. You ensure that uh, at least the food, uh, the, the cold storage go down should get a continuous power supply. This is also very important. You talk to the electricity department and they talk to the uh, concerned uh, officials and uh, to restore the uh, electricity. And then sir, what is, sir, what is MDM, uh, MDM and PDS, sir? Yeah, yeah. MDM, uh, this is uh, MDM is a midday meal program. Okay. And MDM is a midday meal uh, program, midday meal. Then ICD is Integrated Child Development Service Sir, and PDS. Public Distribution System that um, uh, ration ration uh, shops. Okay. 
so the transportation identify discrepancies in food distribution during the floods and heavy rains and assess extent of non availability of food grains and other food items in the region this is also very important identify discrepancies in food distribution during floods and heavy rains because uh, several states will affect uh, very often the floods and heavy rains and uh, during that period also some of the areas very prone to occur floods how many villages are regularly affected the floods how many villages are regularly affected with heavy rains and what are the shortages will be there during rains so those things also we have to identify and we have to make a preparedness and some of the during the during the floods the people may not get anything for a week time so that is a very disastrous so the week time what are the things we have to ready with the, some ready to eat food supplies okay we have to ready to uh, then uh, the the ready to eat food something uh, uh, they should eat readily without cooking because uh, during floods there is no cooking facilities available so all these things we have to gear up and the preparedness is very important and uh, so then only we can save the uh, people and save the nutrition and uh, assess extent of occurrence of uh, food and water contamination and disease outbreaks this is also very important and you can see the food control departments and food testing laboratories pscs primary health centers hospitals all these things gear up and fungal contamination food grains especially in uh, uh, this uh, even rainy season also it is there even for the uh, summer also it is there microbiological contamination of processed foods also there some of the processed foods ready to eat foods microbiological contamination is there regular testing of foods is also important fruits and vegetables water contamination and diurnal outbreaks during the floods uh, heat waves and temperature this is also very important the health department should take care uh, are this diarrheal way outbreaks uh, whether because of floods whether because of wheat waves whether because of temperature rises so these things also the department should uh, caution cautious and take immediate uh, response otherwise lot of uh, this casualties occur and food borne disease outbreaks uh, from consumption of contaminated food this is also we have to watchful where food borne diseases is occurring why it is occurring how to stop this uh, food contamination and identification of vulnerable regions to climate change so, so again uh, for identification we have to take help from metro 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 meteorology department gis gis and uh, remote sensing data we have to get and analyze what are the vulnerable regions uh, what are the vulnerable states uh, so these things we have to analyze and list geo climatic regions in the states identify hot spots for climate change impacts such as heat waves drought prone regions floods and cyclone uh, prone regions so the extent of occurrence of nutrition related illness and deficiencies so here the resources who who have to who, and which of group of people which group of official should work is the psc primary health center anganwadi centers supplementary nutrition programs and other operating region metropolitan metrology department so these all these groups should identify the high risk and vulnerable populations assess infant mortality rates anything after infant mortality assess existing status of key nutritional status indicators namely underweight stunting wasting overweight in the vulnerable population through recorded data from various health centers and assess key nutrition indicators recorded under extreme weather events in the region along with the meteorological data identify the status of nutrition related illness deficiencies namely anemia and other micronutrient deficiencies from recorded data in various health centers because already health uh, health health care uh, already hospitals health care centers they are already assessing micronutrient assess we can take that secondary data wherever hospital data and the, some uh, research agency data from uh, even icmr many institutes are collecting data from icmr institutes we collect all this data and analyze where these problems are occurring why these problems are occurring whether these problems are due to climate change so those kind of analysis and these uh, these all the functionaries all these functionaries should uh, should be alert and assess extent of occurrence of food and water contamination disease outbreak 
the food control departments, food testing laboratories, PHCs, hospitals, and water boards. All the, these people are responsible to control these uh, uh, kind of problems. Then fun, fungal contamination already explained in food grains, and microbiological contamination of frost reports, diurial outbreaks, and this water um, food bond disease outbreak consumption of contaminated foods also we have to control. So here and uh, establish all the resources required available to mitigate or reduce burden of nutritional related disease. This is uh, what we are calling is a preparedness. How we have to preparedness, how to develop a preparedness. So resources from national health program and the Department of uh, Women and Child Development, uh, NGOs and ICMR, NAN, National Institute of Nutrition, and we have to involve local medical colleges, nursing colleges can be utilized to mitigate and reduce burden of nutrition related diseases. So the networking is very important. That's what multi, multi stakeholder approach is very important in this. And uh, uh, one department cannot uh, perform better and multi departmental approach is better. And national health programs like NHM, National Health um, uh, Ministry, Monitoring, what is it? Uh, national, national Health Mission, uh, NHM. We, previously it was NRHM, now it is NHM. So NRHM, this is urban area and rural area. Okay, so NUHM and IDSP, Integrated Disease Surveillance Project and RCH, uh, so uh, Reproductive and Child Health and IMNCP. Uh, this is infant and what is it? Integrated Management, uh, integrated management of Neonatal. Neonatal and child uh, uh, illness. Child illness. MCI. Oh, yeah. no. Okay. So uh, these these are all these programs are there. We have to uh, network with all these programs and uh, the Anganwadi workers, ASHA workers, uh, help in identifying the early signs of acute malnutrition and provide supplementary nutrition. So this grassroots travel workers report is very very important. They should be cautious. They should be they should they should be alert. And during this uh, initial uh, indications, so initial indication is the malnutrition will be increased in that area. The undernutrition is increased in that area. Anemia is increased in that area. These people should recognize uh, first. So then they should report to the higher officials and higher officials again. They go and verify whether this is because of climate change or not. They confirm the uh, reasons, so then action may be taken accordingly. Okay, so identify nutrition in the existing value chain and the risk reductions that are agreed upon by stakeholders and the public. Maximizing the nutrition entering the value chain. Here, several uh, things are there. You can see here improved varieties of biopartisan. How to maximize the nutrition? How to maximizing the nutrition and how to improve the nutrition, how to improve the production, how to improve the consumption level, how to reduce the undernutrition. This is a very multi action plan and uh, it is one action cannot improve. So multi action plan we have to do. And uh, input supply and that is production is increased and uh, uh, post harvest uh, uh, storage we have to improve and processing also we have to improve distribution and marketing retails and computer consumption yeah so yeah each stage uh, these are all the uh, problems because uh, uh, you you can read all these things and uh, this this uh, slides will be shared to you you can go through whenever you get the time and uh, the ultimate thing is you have to minimizing nutrition existing the value chain using existing value chain you have to minimize the nutrition problems. So this is the yeah, conceptual framework. And uh, here uh, the actions needed to be addressed at the factors with the minimize the nutrition in the value chain. And the lack of access to seeds, fertilizers, and the irrigation needs to be addressed by use of uh, improved seed variety, proper irrigation facilities. This agriculture sector Agriculture department should take care of all these uh, actions and post harvest storage with uh, proper aflatoxin control and refrigeration helps in preventing contamination, spoilage, damage from weather and electricity failures. Fermentation and food fortification and decrease availability of unhealthy foods. This is also very important. 
and advertising campaign for unhealthy foods by giving IEC on importance of nutrition, sustainability, and the benefits of the certain foods. So unfortunately, the advertisement, advertisement on unhealthy foods only occurring, but healthy food advertisement is not occurring. So the, the advertisement should be there on un, 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 unhealthy food. Okay, this should not be eat, but it is reversely occurring. So climate impacts on transportation and impact of food prices helps in uniform distribution and helps vulnerable groups. So home fortification with micronutrient powders and home preparation of oral rehydration solution in preventing diarrhea. This, this practice is already existing, but we have to improve and we have to further uh, uh, promote these activities to reduce the diarrheal diseases. This is over. Okay. So operational coordination, the state state stakeholders' role and involvement. So that's what even from even from the beginning we are uh, focusing, we are discussing about networking and uh, the <clears throat> the networking of all the departments. Uh, the, the health sector action adaptation plan includes one is the monitoring and evaluation, the ongoing interventions we have to review and monitoring and evaluation and the screening and strengthening facilities and training awareness and training and capacity building. So building partnership with the civil society by involving citizens, organizations and businesses. So it is a it is a very complex thing, but we have to take up all these actions in the health, health sector adaptation plan. So we have addressed it very clearly in the document. Uh, you people should go through the document understand this uh, all these actionable points and if any problem is there you can contact us we we will try to uh, uh, explain further also so with this uh, i am stopping here and thank you for patient hearing and if you are unable to understand anything you can uh, uh, always uh, send mails to us we can clarify and we can help you in taking action and ultimate, uh, everybody's aim is, ultimate aim is you have to protect the health and we have to protect the nutrition, all our uh, population. Thank you. Yeah, any questions, clarifications? Hello. Good morning, sir. Hello. Yeah, sir, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Dr. Rakshit, District Nodal Officer. Yeah. Tirab, Arunachal Pradesh. Sir, in your stakeholders, I have seen so many departments that is intersectoral, interdepartmental involvement. But I think. In the district level, as a district nodal officer, in the district which I have seen, if as a DNO, um, I want to involve other departments, uh, practically that is not possible. So I think interference of the district ad administration, that is uh, respected deputy commissioner, um, should be sensitized first. And um, involvement of other NGOs, and other sectors like PRI, Panchayat Raj Institution, because uh, grassroots level PRI, um, that is JPC, JPM, yeah. ASM, PRI, they can. PRI, not just go. PRI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yes, yes, so your uh, point they, is very valid. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so, if um, through district administration from DC, sir, the, um, that is, advisory or circular can come to them, then um, they will uh, come forward and they will strengthen um, my activities um, will be more beneficial for the patient and they will strengthen um, my work also. That's my point. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, my, my yeah, yeah, thank you. Very valuable points. Because we have to involve in Panchayat Raj people because the ultimate village level implementers are Panchayat Raj, uh, maybe Sarpanch or other members also may be involved. So that is a under comes under a grassroots level approach. Uh, so as you said, uh, as you said, even uh, uh, 
deputy commissioners, deputy DC also we have to uh, DM and we have to involve all those people because uh, uh, in each state, the nodal person, the each state is a nodal person, uh, the chief secretary, they have already allotted nodal person as the IAS officers in each state and IAS, IBS, so, so many people are there, but uh, those uh, nodal officers, those nodal officers, state mm -hmm. nodal officers, uh, they have to uh, they have to instruct the D, uh, DM or uh, uh, deputy commissioner DC. So they mm -hmm. under their, their guidance, uh, the district level committees also should be formed. So then uh, it may be in that committee even uh, all the stakeholders, including DHOs and uh, other agriculture or state level uh, district level or state level agriculture officers also included in the committee and they should review the uh, the situation what is happening uh, due to climate change at least every quarterly or every month or whatever feasibility is there if problem is there they have to approach they have to conduct meetings review meetings and uh, sensitizing meetings very regularly and the ultimate aim is to how to uh, face this problem, how to prepare ourselves to uh, intervene in this problem to reduce the untoward effects of uh, climate change. So, thank you. You raised very va valiant and pertinent points. Anyone? Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, go uh, ahead. Anyone, please. Dr. Salman from Rangaridi District, uh, Program yeah. Officer, sir. Yeah. Sir, actually, I have, as, as this topic is regarding nutrition versus climate change, I have a very uh, important question, sir. Regarding the organic farming, ironically, organic farming uh, vegetables and fruits are more expensive than the traditionally grown uh, crops nowadays, which really shows a lot of effect on the human health, especially right from the non-communicable diseases to the extent of cancers or the carcinogenic uh, uh, crops, sir. Sir, can it be addressed through the NPCCH program that the organic farming, organic farmed vegetables and fruits may be available at a uh, uh, favorable price sir, to the normal person? Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, your uh, point also well taken because uh, that is the uh, now current uh, problem because the organic uh, vegetables and fruits is available with a very higher cost and. Uh, even uh, we don't have the mechanism to test also whether it is really organic or not also we don't have much laboratories and uh, so those things also we have to improve and as you said uh, we the government should give some subsidy or something uh, some encouraging uh, uh, encourage price then only uh, the all the people uh, can consume the organic uh, foods and uh, as you said lot of problems are there uh, uh, even pesticide contamination, micro uh, microbiological contamination also there. And uh, we have seen in the local uh, area, they are uh, growing some fruits and vegetables, especially green leafy vegetables in uh, sewage uh, water and that contamination also there. So several problems are there because uh, the, the government should and agriculture department also should focus on that. Uh, uh, so that, that's what uh, we have to discuss all these problems in here. Uh, in a networking uh, fashion, then only because this uh, problem cannot solve in one department. You, you have to help uh, take other department and those are the stakeholder departments. So we have to involve and that we have to start this uh, kind of action. So then only we can uh, improve nutrition status of the population. Thank you very much and it is a good point. Right. Any, any other Thank question? You, Thank you. Yeah. Right. Anyone, please? Yeah, yeah, please. Kapurtala, DA Kapurtala. Please speak. Let me play. I'm there. No, Hello. Uh, yeah. Nine, somebody is asking uh, to share the PPT. We will share the PPT. And uh, uh, we, we, we already we are we, we are sharing uh, the PPT to uh, Rajesh Jayasri. So the Dr. Jayasri can share uh, the PPT for everyone. Okay. So any other thing, please share the PPT. 
What is that? Not yes, sir. Kindly share the video. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good morning, sir. From Belgium. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sir, good morning from Belgium, sir. From Karnataka, Belgium, sir. Yes, please, sir. Sir, uh, I was at NIN uh, during 2011, sir. Uh, oh, now, very good. Now I am working at uh, DUB, as a DUBD CEO, sir. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. But uh, in what context you are there in NIN? Uh, ICMR uh, MPH program was there, sir. In that we were. Oh, MPH program. Okay, okay. So you, you are there in my department also, public health nutrition. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, very good. Okay. Very nice to hear you, sir. Very nice to hear your presentation. Of very nice. Thank you. Very nice. Sir, one thing I want to submit, sir. Uh, we are doing uh, inter uh, sectoral coordination committee meetings every three months, uh, once in every three months, sir. Yes. Uh, and uh, only important thing is the meteorological department so far we have uh, not incorporated. Okay. Uh, so they are not coming in contact. Yeah, yeah, not at all in contact. Okay, okay. So that that part has to be taken care by the higher ups uh, from your end, sir. So, uh, yeah, definitely. definitely. We will we will uh, we will in contact with the state uh, meteorological department and uh, they can which district you are there? Which district you are belong to? Be Belgium, sir. Yeah, last yeah, uh, Last year you were here at KLE Center also, sir. One okay. Month. Yeah, we will we will talk to the meteorological department at state level, and that that can be done. Okay. Ah, that is one. Uh, yeah, that is that is more important because uh, meteorological department only should give the uh, yes, information and warning sign. Okay, this is uh, going to be happen, and all the officials should be very uh, careful and preparedness also should be done. Yes, sir. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. If uh, no questions are there, uh, thank you very much once again. Hey, just wait. Any questions are there? Any video, no? Repeat it. Repeat it. Even a video, that is easier. If you want to see them, yeah, we'll show them five to five ten minutes. Where are they? They are in the NPCC. Now you can open here. You can open from our time. Here you go. Just a minute, uh, we will show some uh, videos, uh, very brief videos, three, three minutes, just uh, for sample. So those videos also we will be shared to you. And you can also uh, uh, show the videos in your meetings. Amen. Mm. Sir, who is from Kapurthala? Who is from Kapurthala? Kapurthala, they raise their hand and but they are not speaking. Kapurthala. Yeah, please, uh, please Hello. speak. Just wait, just wait. After uh, this Kapurthala, madam. Yeah, madam, please speak. You, you are uh, unmute, unmute, please. Your voice is not taking that. Please increase your voice. Not audible. Hmm? Hmm. Otherwise, you can send a message. You ask in the chat box. Okay. Ra uh, Rakshita. Hello. Hello. Sir. Namaste. Yeah, uh, I'm di uh, district nodal officer, Tirab district, Arunachal Pradesh. Sir, one point uh, came into my mind. Just I want to share uh, in this platform. Sir, all these activities, 
people should be aware so uh, social media otherwise ipr department we can involve ipr information IPR. and public relation yeah okay. yeah definitely and then yeah. so then it will come into the social media and people will be benefited yeah IPR. definitely definitely ipr will be involved ipr no doubt ipr yeah so okay. thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you thank you for your suggestion i mean nane nidhar untay kada nik drop box sir am i audible now may i say something yeah yeah now audible please tell me okay uh, sir um, as one of uh, my colleagues pointed out that uh, the district administration needs to be involved i have also been facing all those problems uh, voices yeah your voice is low just uh, speak loud okay i'll raise the volume okay yeah yeah please yeah go ahead go ahead madam go ahead I'm, i i hope it's better now yeah now it is better very good okay okay, okay. Uh, as one of my colleagues pointed out that the district administration is Uh, very minimally involved in anything related with npcc hh i have also faced such problem and because of that i am unable to do as much as i want to do for this program so uh, i don't uh, if you have any suggestions how to involve them more uh, if not just for nutrition but overall for the whole program because i also realized that if this program is run fully to the core all components of npcc hh are run fully and to the core uh we can reduce our burden for other programs like i'm handling the uh, nbbdcp i'm handling rabies i'm handling uh, disaster management for my district i know the my work burden will be reduced if this program is run fully and to the core so i don't know how to involve the district administration more and more into this because this is a multi sectoral thing not just a nutrition part the whole of the program yes yes no you are correct uh, you are correct but the only thing is uh, we have to uh, talk to state level official and maybe chief secretary or somebody so then uh, the instruction should go from chief secretary to district or dc or uh, somebody so then only it will be activated so we will uh, talk to uh, chief secretary and if, uh, okay. okay so then uh, it may be improved but uh, your activeness is very important if you are active automatically things uh, most of the most of the things will be improved thank you thank you very thank much for your interest thank you sir thank you anyone please even i can i can open otherwise uh, ah, yeah you can show now but uh, health action Health action. Health action and the uh, fish or something like that. So just uh, uh, watch the this uh, uh, video. Yeah, they made an action plan for everyone for right. climate change. Climate change is an inevitable and unequivocal risk posing on the face of our planet. Yeah, undoing the irresponsible. Is it is visible? No, no, no. एक्शन प्लान फॉर एवरी वन फॉर क्लाइमेट चेंज क्लाइमेट चेंज इज एन एनेबल एंड अनिकल रिस्क पोजिंग ऑन द फेस ऑफ आर प्लान on doing the irresponsible and irreparable damage that has been caused to the environment due to the reckless actions of the human beings need a damage control and immediately so that the posterity is not left hanging on the brink of survival addressing the different facets of climate change has to be a collective effort with no alternative whatsoever at different levels individual community and nations The drivers of change in this case are the leaders who will take the right steps to enforce the pro environment actions at the right time. These torch bearers are the policy makers, leaders in our workplaces, politicians, and other influencers who hold the power of speech and the authority to be listened to. These leaders have to ensure that the everyday practices in their niche environments are aligned to the universal paradigm of green environment and create an enabling environment for their fellow men to adopt the same too. some of the common small easy to implement yet powerful changes that can be adopted 
One, public commute for work to minimize air and noise pollution. Two, minimizing single-use plastic in work and public places. Three, ensuring clean water supply to masses. Four, try to reuse and recycle the non-renewable energy resources like water, coal-drawn electricity. Five, switch off fans and lights when away. Six, electronic usage and wastage should be handled mindfully. Seven, reduce, reuse, and recycle food whenever possible. Eight, organic methods of farming should be adopted to minimize damages to soil. Nine, encouraging kitchen gardens at respective capacities in school, colleges, homes, and offices. 10, planting more trees. This is one video. Another video we just uh, want to show about the uh, disaster management, which we know. <laughs> Another uh, nutrition specific video is uh, So how were your environment week celebrations in the school? Oh, that was an eventful week. We had activities for each day for the week-long celebration. First day was training on how to raise our own kitchen garden. We had sowed several green leafy vegetable seeds, vegetables, fruit-bearing plants. Second day, we had an interesting session at the canteen during our lunch break. There were colorful and informative posters on managing waste disposal. Those posters spoke about the importance of segregating waste before we throw them. Did you know that we should separate our waste as dry waste and wet waste, and also as biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste? Oh, is it? This is very new and useful information for me as well. On the last day, we had an exciting field trip as well. Wow. Did they take you to Water World? Ah, oh, no. Instead, they took us to a nearby farm where the teacher showed us how the grains are grown. We saw the farmers there working so hard, and that made us realize the importance slash significance of not wasting food. Also, we saw many fresh fruits and vegetables grown in the nearby farms. That's when our teacher told us how important it is for us to eat a healthy diet every day, which should contain lots of fruits and vegetables, milk, eggs, cereals, and pulses. 
We thoroughly enjoyed the entire week's celebration. Wow, this sounds much more interesting than the water world trip. I think next time I will also join you in this kind of celebration. This field next to my paddy field looks so lush and rich. Let me ask Ramesh. Ramesh, my friend, how is it that your field is having such good yield when both of us have the same farm area? We buy seeds from a common market and we get water also from the same river. Come and see. Oh, you are not growing paddy? What is this new crop? It's Kodo millet crop. Millet oh, yes. Lips. I remember seeing this grain in the market the other day. I think it has become popular everywhere. Yes. Yes. It's good for health Applied. and money. That's because half I of my paddy crop had gone dry due to less water supply in our village. Why don't you also grow millets? It's good for health. It is market value good for the soil. It is not it's, not it's a win-win-win for us, for the market, and our farmland. I will thank you, my friend. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I, I hope uh, you enjoyed with this videos. <laughs> And the only thing is, uh, these videos we have to change the accent and we have to change, uh, we have to uh, translate into local languages. So then it is very easy to display and understand the, all the people. Yeah. Anybody, anybody would uh, talk to you? Oh, sir, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, my good sir, afternoon. Sir. Uh, yeah, so, so my small suggestion is, can you please involve the veterinary department also, sir? Because in the uh, summer time, that may be climate change impact also, uh, yeah, animals yeah, also. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, the animal are, yeah. Uh, so that lead to zoonotic diseases. Yes, yes. Uh, one health is actually... Uh, one health. Uh, even one health also similar. there, under one, under one health, all the departments also covering. Mm. You can write that. Okay. So you can specially. Thank you. Thank you for your suggestion. Thank you, sir. Anyone? Anyone, please? So otherwise, if there is no questions, uh, we are uh, winding up this program and uh, then uh, we'll meet you soon. We'll share that. It we, we, we will share all this uh, material. Uh, so the IEC also will be IEC material also. Okay. Close. Jay is there? She's uh, another meeting. Another meeting. Okay, right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, close. Thank you. Close, close. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right.